If you want to become a top programmer, then you need to stop listening to the advice that to be a great programmer, you need to know everything about coding or that you need to study five programming languages. If there's anything that I learned about learning to code is that becoming a good programmer and a great programmer is less about knowing everything in advance, but a lot more about just adopting the right habits when you are coding to solve problems with code effectively. Now, I have spent a very long time figuring out what it actually means to be a great programmer. I have worked for a big company. I even started my own tech startup and I have spoken to a ton of very top tier programmers that are even better than I am. And through this, I have learned that there are seven habits that all of these people have in common that makes them very, very effective programmers capable of solving any problems with ease. And today I'm going to show you what these seven habits are. These habits are not that hard to implement either, but sadly no one talks about them and not being aware of even one of these could really be hindering your progress as a programmer. The first of these habits of top 1% programmers is that they spend a lot of time solving problems regularly. This is the one habit that is probably the most important one, especially in the early days of your coding journey because this is the one habit that's going to give you the crucial skill of thinking like a programmer. Most people who are beginners think that learning to code is about learning some specific set of skills or concepts or like syntactical details but really learning to code is just about adopting the skill of thinking in terms of the coding logic. Let me give you an analogy. When you're learning to speak foreign languages like French for example, the mistake people make when they learn at school is that they think that learning French is about memorizing tons of vocabulary and grammatical details. But in reality, the way you actually learn it, and anyone who's actually learned to speak a foreign language will know this, is by using it in the real world. This could be reading, listening, or especially speaking that language. So what you want to do is just pick up some basics and then go and pick up like a kid's book, for example, and just try to read it in French. And through this, your brain will naturally acquire that language because you're using it in real world context. And the same applies to programming. You don't learn programming by memorizing tons of syntactical details. You acquire programming by using programming in real world context. And in the case of programming, this simply means in real coding problems. So what you want to do is learn some basics of programming and then instantly go and apply those basics into basic coding problems. And once you start to become comfortable, you can learn some more complicated details, some intermediate concepts, and then you apply them and you go to this like learn, apply, learn, apply loop that you just simply keep doing until you're as good as you want to be. Now, how do you do this? Well, for example, there's this website called LeetCode that is specifically meant to give you a list of tons of different coding problems that you can do at all kinds of levels. You're probably gonna wanna learn some basics before you can even do the most basic problems here because they can be quite difficult. But you wanna get into the habit of just solving a lot of LeetCode or any other coding problems every single day because this is how you develop the muscle memory of having this coding logic just ingrained in your brain so that when you see a problem, you'll just instantly know what concepts et cetera to apply to it. Let's recap. You never want to stop practicing coding problems. If that is the only habit out of all of these that you take up, even that alone will ensure that you will eventually get good. But these next two habits will actually help you solve these problems more effectively. The first of these is to be stubborn. Now, coding is hard, especially in the beginning. I think we all know that. And once you start coding and you start solving problems and coding projects, you will notice that you will always get this urge to just give up because everything that you're doing, especially in the beginning, seems so foreign and so difficult because you're having to use this new sort of thinking style of coding to solve this problem that you're not really used to. When you're coding, you almost need to act like a bit of a stubborn kid who's just like, no, I can do this. I will not give up. You need to have the stubbornness to refuse to give up, even when something feels impossible to you, because trust me, it never is impossible. It just feels like that, but you just need to give it time because what you're doing is something that your brain is just not used to yet. Which brings us to habit number three, which is to think like a detective. Now, coding a lot of the time is almost like being a bit of a detective because what will happen is that you will write some algorithm and you will run the code and of course things go wrong as they always do. And at first glance, you almost never know exactly what went wrong. So what you'll have to do is go to the error code and like find the line of code where you had the error. And then you need to go to that line and like figure out about this function. Like, okay, what is wrong here? Did I use this function wrong? Things like this. You sort of have to trace the error to the root cause of the error. And you need to, again, have the patience to 
do this and not give up. And you need to cultivate this mindset of like being a detective where, for example, you look at your error, like the line where the error is and you've used a library function, for example. Now maybe you need to go on Google or the library documentation or like figure out the root cause that was causing this error to happen. And eventually, if you're willing to just go through this process time and time again, you will always figure everything out. But again, you need patience for it, which also brings us to habit number four. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by MailTrap, an email delivery platform that developers like myself absolutely love. I've used MailTrap for a ton of my projects that need email delivery because of their actionable analytics. That is honestly the best in the industry. They give me full statistics and a drill down reports on each and every email that I send. MailTrap also offers separate streams for transactional and bulk emails, SMTP and API integrations, plus SDKs for major programming languages. What I also really appreciate is that they have real human support available around the clock. So if you're looking to add email delivery for your projects, I highly recommend you try MailTrap today at MailTrap.io. Link will be down below. So a particular trait that I see in every successful person that I meet is this one. They always have this strange addiction to really challenging things. To be successful, especially in any like logical endeavor like programming, you sort of have to be a bit of a masochist. Like I was always sort of like this as a kid. For example, when I was playing video games, I would always be the guy who would just turn the video game to the hardest possible difficulty for no apparent reason, because I just enjoyed the challenge. And honestly, I attribute a lot of the success, whatever success I've had, to this trait that I have, that I really embrace and I enjoy challenges. And this is so especially important in program because everything you're doing by definition is going to be a challenge. So if you don't enjoy challenges, then programming is not for you. And if you don't enjoy them yet, but you really wanna get into programming, you sort of have to learn this mindset of just embracing challenges. Now you also need to adopt the habit of moving fast. When I started my first job as a software engineer, what would always happen with a lot of the other new software engineers and the new programmers, the juniors in the team, is that they would be very afraid of making mistakes. And they would be very meticulously trying to make their code absolutely perfect before they even run it or before they show it to someone because they were so afraid of essentially doing things wrong and crashing the code or whatever. And I know this is a very natural feeling to have. Like we never want to make mistakes, right? we want to do things correctly, right? But in programming, this is actually a pretty destructive habit. Now to illustrate, the way you get into a solution in any sort of coding problem or project is that first you code something and then the code breaks. <laughs> Basically everything goes wrong because that's just what always happens. The first rule of programming, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. I just made that up, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you can agree with that. And then you fix the problem and then it works, but then you change something and again, something goes wrong and then you fix it and then you call something else. So it's this process of coding, uh, crashing, fixing, coding, crashing, fixing. So if you're just afraid of making these mistakes and you're afraid of these crashes and you try to spend too long perfecting your code, you might spend three times more time, but the chance of you avoiding all mistakes is maybe gonna go up by 10%. So it's actually a lot more efficient to just code up some Thing, not worry too much whether it's actually correct and just run the code and see what goes wrong and then apply the habit of being a detective and finding through the error code like okay what went wrong and then you can essentially get the computer to just tell you straight away where there is some problem in your code rather than you having to look through all the code and figure out if there is something still wrong do you get what i'm saying i hope that makes sense you're going to be shortening this loop and just like making the loop of this coding crashing fixing a lot quicker and essentially your entire coding process is gonna speed up so much. If you're just willing to move fast and be fearless and just realize that whatever you do, your computer is not going to explode. You're not going to set your computer on fire just because you crashed your code. You can always fix the code and then it's gonna work basically. Don't be afraid, just move fast and break things because they will break anyway. So you might as well break them quickly so that you can fix them quicker. Now the sixth habit is to keep things simple. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that we actually made when we were coding up our startup is that we were trying to make the code way, way too complicated. Now, the one thing that you as a programmer need to realize, but that you might not want to hear, is that no one in the world, especially the users of your projects, give a flying about your code. 
No one cares about your amazing backend or how you modularized your code or your beautiful, clean code, whatever. No one gives a damn. The only thing that people care about is does your code work or not? In our app, for example, when you as the user use it, you don't give a f what the code looks like. You just care about, does this project solve a problem for me? And oftentimes, as we learn through experience, code that is simple is going to be much more likely to work and much less likely to give you headaches. So whatever you're coding, try to make it as simple as you possibly can and only add complexity if you really, really need to. Just trust me, like, I can't really explain it here how important it is, but you will thank me later if you do that. And the last habit, which might sound counterintuitive given how I'm usually the guy who's telling you to like work hard and all this, but the last habit is to be lazy. You want to be lazy, strategically lazy as a programmer. What do I mean by this? Well, to understand this, let's look at the opposite case. Let's imagine what things would look like if you were trying to be as non-lazy as possible. So you were just trying to work as hard as possible as a programmer. Well, what it would mean is that you wouldn't be using any libraries because using a library is lazy. I'm just gonna code it up myself. You wouldn't be using a programming language like Python because Python is for lazy people. That They make things too easy. I'm gonna use a language like C where I'm gonna be coding up everything from scratch like with the core foundations of programming. Really, you wouldn't even be using a programming language at all. You'd just be using assembly because using a programming language is for lazy people. We wanna do everything from scratch ourselves because we wanna work hard. You see the problem here? Really the core point of all the programming tools and languages and frameworks, etc., that we have is to make things as easy for us programmers as possible. When you're using the math library in Python, for example, the purpose of that library is to make it easy for you to do mathematical functions in Python so that you can be lazy by not having to write up these functions yourself. So people often come to me and they say like, oh, I feel bad using ChatGPT to generate code for me. Shouldn't I be doing it myself? I feel lazy when I do that. Well, you're supposed to be lazy. If you have a tool in your arsenal that is able to do something for you much more quickly than you could do by coding it up manually from scratch, you should absolutely do it. There's no reason to spend five hours doing something that you can do with ChatGPT in five minutes, for example. So the big point here is be lazy strategically in the sense that you should look at all the tools that are available to you. This is actually a core skill of a programmer to understand what is the most efficient way to use the tools that you have available to you as a programmer to do something as quickly as possible. So as a summary, here are the habits on the screen right now. Write them down. Make sure you actually apply what you've learned here. And after you have done that, as your next step, you wanna go and build some projects with your coding skills while applying these habits. And if you need ideas for projects, I recommend you watch this video right here, where I give you some ideas for really great projects that you can start building right now. So go watch that video next, and I will see you in the next one.